twice in ancient times, the people living in what we now call Denmark were completely replaced by newcomers from far away. The first group were Neolithic farmers. They brought agriculture to the region and settled the land. But they only lasted about 1,000 years. Then, something changed. Around 5,000 years ago, a new people arrived. They came from the vast open steppes of what is now Ukraine and southwestern Russia. These ancient migrations shake the very foundation of the people, but over time, new identities began to form. As centuries passed and tribes rose and fell, a new name began to echo across the land. Denmark. Even the name itself tells a story. Dan refers to the Danes, an ancient North Germanic tribe whose name likely meant flatland and mark, meaning borderland. Put together, Denmark means borderland of the Danes. Our story begins over 12,000 years ago just after the last ice age. As glaciers melted away, early hunter-gatherers moved into Scandinavia. These pioneers carried Europe's oldest genetic markers, like paternal haplogroup I2 and maternal haplogroups U5 and U4. Remarkably genetically homogeneous for over 4,500 years, these hunter-gatherers likely had dark hair blue eyes and relatively darker skin, although lighter skin traits were gradually evolving due to northern latitudes. About 6,000 years ago, Denmark's population changed dramatically for the first time when farmers from Anatolia abruptly arrived, marking a swift transition to agriculture and permanent settlements. Associated with the funnel beaker culture, these newcomers dramatically reshaped Denmark's genetic makeup, carrying paternal haplogroups G2A and E1B1B and maternal haplogroups N1A, T2, J and K. Their presence led to lighter skin and increased stature, with minimal initial mixing with local hunter-gatherers. However, the Neolithic farmers lasted only about 1,000 years before being swiftly replaced by the Yannaya people from the eastern steppes around 5,000 years ago. Known locally as the single grave or corded ware culture, these steppe migrants introduced paternal haplogroups R1A and R1B, significantly reshaping Denmark's genetics once again. They brought transformative technologies such as the use of horses, wheeled carts, advanced metallurgy and new agricultural practices. This migration was notably male-dominated, involving significantly more males than females who often mixed with local women. The arrival of these young Laya-related migrants resulted in complete genetic replacement, making present-day Danes taller and giving them lighter features, such as blonde hair and blue eyes. Shortly afterward, around 4,500 years ago, the Bell Beaker culture expanded into Denmark, further blending steppe lineages with local populations. Known for their distinctive bell-shaped pottery, these people brought with them advanced metalworking techniques, including copper and bronze tool production, as well as improvements in burial practices and social organization. By the Bronze Age, Hapla Group by One emerged prominently alongside existing lineages. 
Kapla Group Y1 likely developed from earlier Mesolithic hunter-gatherers in Northern Europe and rapidly expanded during this era, becoming a defining genetic marker of future Scandinavians and closely associated with Germanic peoples. The Viking Age, beginning around 1200 years ago, brought renewed genetic diversity to Denmark. Danish Vikings carried paternal haplogroups I1, R1A and R1B and maternal haplogroups H, J and U, spreading these widely through exploration, warfare and settlement. They launched expansive raids across the British Isles, Ireland and northern France, plundering monasteries, establishing settlements and founding influential trading hubs. These incursions often brought back not only wealth and slaves, but also people who became integrated into Danish society, contributing new genetic material. Viking longships ventured as far west as Iceland and Greenland, and as far east as the rivers of modern-day Russia and Ukraine. Genetic inflows from Britain, Ireland, and notably southern Europe occurred during this period, likely due to trade, slavery, intermarriage, and the movement of Christian missionaries. As a result, Southern Denmark in particular became a hotspot of geometric diversity compared to the more isolated northern regions. Later, medieval unions like the Kalmar Union, which united Denmark, Norway and Sweden under a single monarch from 1397 to 1523, facilitated increased movement of people, ideas and culture across the Nordic region. This was followed by centuries of shifting alliances and unions, including the Danish-Norwegian Union and interactions with the Hanseatic League, which brought closer contact with German-speaking regions and trade networks. These interactions with Northern European neighbours, such as Germany, the Netherlands and Slavic peoples, continued to subtly shape Danish genetics through intermarriage migration and trade. The Wens, a group of West Slavic tribes, settled in parts of southern Denmark during the medieval period, leaving a small but detectable genetic imprint. Today, Denmark remains genetically cohesive, closely related to Sweden, Norway, Britain, Germany and France, though notably lacking the Uralic ancestry common in northern Scandinavia. The primary paternal haplogroups are R1b and I1, each comprising around 35% of the population, alongside lower frequencies of R1a and I2. On the maternal side, haplogroup H predominates, reflecting multiple ancient migrations into Europe. In terms of ancestral components, modern Danes carry on average approximately 50 to 60 percent steppe ancestry, primarily from Yamnair accorded Ware origins. 20 to 30 percent Anatolian Neolithic farmer ancestry, and around 10 to 20 percent Western European hunter-gatherer ancestry. However, this varies slightly by region. Northern and Western Jutland have higher levels of steppe ancestry, reaching 60 to 65% and up to 20% hunter-gatherer ancestry. Anatolian farmer input is lower, around 15 to 20%. These regions are more genetically conservative and reflect deep Scandinavian roots. Central Denmark shows a balanced genetic profile close to the national average. Steppe ancestry ranges from 55 to 60 percent. Anatolian farmer ancestry is about 25 percent, 
and hunter-gatherer ancestry falls between 15 and 20 percent. This region has long served as a genetic bridge and cultural corridor. Eastern Denmark is slightly more diverse due to historical gene flow. Anatolian farmer ancestry rises to about 30 percent and there are traces of Slavic admixture including medieval Wendish and later Polish ancestry. Southern Denmark shows mild admixture from Central Europe. There are small genetic signals from early medieval migrations and Hanseatic trade. Anatolian farmer ancestry is slightly above average, while steppe ancestry is slightly lower. These regional distinctions, while subtle, contribute to a more nuanced understanding of Denmark's genetic landscape shaped by millennia of migrations, replacements and cultural shifts. Even modern Danish surnames and towns reflect this deep genetic history. Names like Jensen and Nielsen recall Viking traditions, while cities like Roskula and Odense echo their Norse heritage. Denmark's coasts once bustled with Viking longships and thriving markets. In fact, Denmark's oldest town, Ribe, began as a Viking trade hub around 710 AD. Many Danish surnames echo this era. For example, Eriksson means son of Eric, and Eric in Old Norse means ever ruler or eternal ruler. Long before the Vikings, various Germanic tribes dwelt in what is now Denmark, leaving their names on the land. Jutland, a large peninsula that contains the mainland regions of Denmark, literally means the land of the Jutes, while northern Jutland's region Himmeland comes from the Kimbri, a tribe from Jutland that even marched off to battle the Roman Republic around 100 BC. The Angles from southern Jutland migrated to Britain in the 5th century, giving their name to England. These ancient Danes left traces in modern names too. For instance, the surname Knudsen, meaning son of Knud, harks back to the old name Knud, meaning not in Old Norse. In the Middle Ages, Denmark saw an influx of Slavic people known as the Vens. These were West Slavic tribes from the South Baltic coast who migrated or were invited to settle in Denmark and others came as traders. They concentrated in the southeastern isles of Mön, Lolland, Felster, where even today many village names like Kramnitsa or Korsalitsa have Slavic origins. The Wrens left marks on Danish geography. The northern tip of Jutland, Venchashel, literally means Wren's land, hinting that a Slavic community once lived there. In the medieval capital, Roskili, the harbour market was called Vindeboda, meaning Ven's booths, a place where Slavic merchants sold goods. The Slavic influence reached into Danish naming as well. Some Danish families adopted Wendish surnames, for example, Rent is a surname that simply means a person of Wendish origin. Remarkably, even the Danish royal line was touched by Slavic heritage. King Valdemar was named after his Slavic grandfather. Valdemar comes from the Slavic name Vladimir, meaning to rule with greatness. Denmark's DNA today carries the echoes of Ice Age hunters, pioneering farmers, powerful step riders, innovative traders, and legendary Viking warriors. If you found this journey into Denmark's ancient DNA as fascinating as we did, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more. We've explored the history carved into Danish bones, but there's so much more to discover. Be sure to check out our other videos covering the genetic stories of countries like Norway, the British Isles, 
Italy, Spain, German, Greece and beyond. Each nation has its own DNA trail to follow, filled with migrations, mysteries and surprising connections. Let us know in the comments which country's genetic history you'd like us to explore next. And if you have Danish roots, tell us what region your family comes from. We'd love to hear your story. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next chapter of human history, told through our DNA.